Hello. Welcome again. Pastor Deborah here. And once again, we're in the Garden of Eden, the spiritual place for your forever person, the spirit part of you. Yes, even though I am physically sitting in my living room and your physical body is somewhere else, could be on another planet, in a faraway galaxy, in an unknown star system. But your spirit is in the Garden of Eden, brought to you. You have been brought here, drawn by Agape Love himself, the King of Heaven, who I represent as his ambassador, his political leader, his emissary of the kingdom. That's right. I've come to speak to you and tell you about another king, another kingdom called the kingdom of darkness, which is ruled by ignorance and confusion, bewitchment and lies. We now call it disinformation. Mm -hmm. And he has a capital called spiritual Babylon. And I've been working through the book called The Kingdom of Darkness that I wrote many, many years ago. I have so many books I wrote because I spent many years at the Lord's request to stay at home, to study, to pray, to be healed. He had to cut me off from the community, from all that others were doing and thought was fun. I had to study. I sort of went into a monastery. Mm -hmm. I talked to squirrels and I talked to trees. And then I'd have people come to me in the spirit. Maybe you are one of them to talk to me. Wonderful stories about that to come in another portion called the School of Light, the Kingdom of Agape Love, Volume 1 and Volume 2. I've had many spiritual experiences, which I had to have because I was learning how to help you the Lord's way. If you remember, I had been a licensed clinical mental health counselor in the nation of America and in the state of Florida for about 10 years. I was trying to help you the, that way, the way of illness, biology, science. Psychiatric disorders. Mm -hmm. I used to give lots of psychological testing to try to figure out what was wrong with your soul. What was wrong with your thoughts and thinking? Why you were feeling the way you were. Mm -hmm. Which was all based on diseases and illnesses of the soul and biological body. I was considered a almost a medical doctor, because I had to know medicine. I had to understand the language of insurance companies, numbers. I had to understand the diagnostic statistical manual for psychiatric disorders that the World Health Organization devised with psychiatric associations. I had to learn. I was trying to help you with your issues and your problems. Why you feel the way you feel. Why you do what you do. And I did that. Until this wonderful Lord of the kingdom of heaven. Who I had believed in since I was three years old. Been praying to, but never really knew. Didn't understand. Called me to himself. To help him help you. But I had to learn who you were. Where were you? What was a captive spiritually? What was holding you back? You had a forever person, a spirit? That wasn't talked about in the church. That wasn't talked about in religion. Mm -mm. So I had a long journey to go on. And one of my journeys of studying covered the kingdom of darkness and its king, Satan. Oh, Satan didn't start off as Satan. He started off as Lucifer, the high archangel, a cherubim, 
the sun of the first age, the sun of the morning.、Mm-hmm. And he became wicked, perverse, twisted, due to pride, and lusting and desires. And he became Satan, the adversary of God, and God's kingdom, heaven. He became my adversary and yours. I didn't know it at first. But in my days of study and in my years, I wrote this book, "The Kingdom of Darkness: Spiritual Babylon." And God had me work through the scriptures to understand Satan, who had been Lucifer, a beauty, and had become a beast. I had to understand his heart. What happened to him? Because God told me if I wanted to understand you, the forever person, and your fall. Why you are the way you are? I had to study Satan. All of us, before we believe in Christ Jesus, the Son of the Living God, who died on a cross to get us home, we all were children of Satan. We were made spiritually and biologically in His image and likeness. We were perverted and twisted. We didn't know it. We just got born into it.、Mm-hmm. We were a mess. I was, and I'm sure you are. So we want to begin part number, or episode number twenty-five, of the Kingdom of Darkness, the Big Blue Book, I call it, that I wrote years ago. But before we begin, let's welcome everybody to the garden, no matter where your spirits are from, and no matter where your physical body is. Welcome. This is the very garden of the presence and the pleasure and delight of the King of the Kingdom of Heaven, Agape Love Himself, the Heavenly Father, my King, my Lord, my Master, my Owner, my Savior. He who I serve willingly, with a loving heart, to help him. To reach you,、mm-hmm. so let's pray, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this wonderful motion video by Pixabay to help us see the kingdom of darkness and the heart of Satan and what was going on on the inside of him, so we can understand ourselves and what goes on inside of us. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit, our spiritual teacher, that you provide to us to help us to spiritually see and hear and perceive your words of spirit and truth. And Father, thank you for Zoom Pro, who I'm recording in. And Father, ask that these people forgive me for not having a green screen, so I might be fuzzy to them, or the words might not even look real. But Father, please help them to understand my little space, green screens, and I just don't work. But I want them to have a motion video that helps them to see beyond their natural eyes. Father, today I was just decluttering, and I found lots of cards that had pictures on it. I knew years and years ago. That people needed to hear your words and have visuals. You taught that to us through your son. You taught through parables. You taught us what we knew. You showed us pictures of things we couldn't understand spiritually. So thank you, Father, for all you've done for all of us to help us spiritually understand you, ourselves, others, and now. The king of the kingdom of darkness, the king of disinformation, the king of lies, falsehoods, bewitchment, confusion. Satan himself, the adversary of God, the king of disinformation, the king of lies,、mm-hmm. deception, bewilderment, bewitchment.、Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. For helping us in this episode number twenty-five, in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son, your Lamb and sacrifice to bring us home, when we believe in Him as your Son, 
and accept his sacrifice on a cross and his resurrection out of the tomb. Thank you. Even if we have just little belief, not much, just believe in your name. Thank you, Father, for helping us. We need every bit you got in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. In the last episode, number 24, we were working through some scriptures that would help us to understand Satan, who had been Lucifer, and his fall. I want to pick up now in another scripture, Isaiah 14, 4 through 20, from the authorized King James version of the Bible. It's the one that has no commentaries. It has no denominational slant. It is just simply the Greek words and the Hebrew words, maybe Aramaic, translated into your language. No commentaries by anything. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Now, I do use a strong concordance because it helps me to understand what the Hebrew word means and the Greek word. And there's lots of meanings to one word. Then I use the Webster's Dictionary, and I look up the word in it as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the only three sources I use, the Holy Spirit, Strong's Concordance, and Webster's Dictionary. If I don't get the amplified spiritual version, I ask the Holy Spirit for help. One way that I was told and taught by the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible was to put the word spirit and spiritual in front of just about every word, because I learned that these words in the Bible were words of spirit and life. They were from a spiritual God who was seeking to have my spirit knowledgeable because it was in darkness, ignorance. It did not know this. It had forgotten long ago. These truths lied in mist, legends, had become superstitions. So I had to have help, and you will too. So let's begin with Isaiah 14, 4 through 20. I'm not sure how far we'll get, but we'll work. Verse 4, this was God speaking to Isaiah. Isaiah was an Old Testament prophet that God worked through. Isaiah wrote him down, his visions, his words from God, even his spiritual trips. And God was talking to Isaiah to prophesy out, decree and declare to a king of Tyrus. He was a physical being that had Satan connected to him. So God was talking to both of them, but mainly to Satan, who was hiding behind this political leader. I had to learn that our political leaders doesn't matter what they are, school board members, mayors, police officers, school teachers, school board people, presidents, prime ministers, kings, queens, legislative judges. They, too, could have the king of darkness behind them or in them. It was a shocker when that happened. Yeah, and it will shock you as well. We kind of understand it when we see decisions or they look the other way or a judge doesn't give the full sentence or a politician says one thing to get elected and then lies to us, hides their life and their family from us. Mm -hmm. We don't know all what goes on in the realm of the spirit. I can tell you a lot happens. There are secret societies. Politicians, I don't know about in your country, they all have secret societies, meetings that they meet globally. Some go on a couple of weeks vacation somewhere and they do service to an owl in the Bohemian Grove. Mm -hmm. It's all hidden from us. And we wouldn't believe it was true if we saw it anyway. But I had to study secret societies. I had to study things called Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the Bilderberg Group, the International Illuminati. Mm -hmm. I had to study the Masons, witchcraft, high priest, druids, 
other religions, other governments. I had to study everything to understand what was happening in the realm of the spirit to us, against us, or for us. Did we serve the kingdom of darkness government and its king, Satan, or did we serve the kingdom of heaven? Who did we serve? Who were we working for? I studied. And this book was one of the many books that came out. So verse 4 is God speaking to Isaiah. That you, Isaiah, shall take up this proverb against the king of spiritual Babylon, Lucifer, who had now become Satan, the spiritual adversary of God, the king of heaven. And you say to him, Isaiah, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. I had to learn from this that God will direct you to speak directly to Satan, to his strong men. We call them devils and demons, to the evil, wicked oaths, and to their unseen strong men that are holding us. God will direct you what to say. Verse 5, the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. But that wasn't true at that time. That had not happened. But God is saying, prophesy this, Isaiah. Speak, because I've already done it. It's a done deal in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 6. He who smote, who hit, who struck the people in anger, in wrath, with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger and persecuted and that hindered them. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I already beat you, but buddy, you that have struck in anger, the people of the nations, you that continue to strike them, that rule these nations by your anger and hatred of me. You that have persecuted the nations and hindered them. Ooh. Can we see that in some nations in the world or in your world today? Sure. You see that in many ways. Verse 7. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet because I have already defeated you. And they will break forth into singing. Mm -hmm. So he is saying, hey, you think you won? I already defeated you. I've already broken the staff of you, the wicked ones. And your scepter, your authority of your powers of ruling. I've already done it. You who smote the nations, the people. You who continually hit them. With your anger, we have persecuted them. Sure doesn't sound like it. If we look at the world today. That, the earth is not quiet. The earth is not at rest. It's not singing. It's being punished. Did you know all of creation is groaning and moaning under this dark, hateful, angry rulership of Satan. It's waiting for you, little one, to rise up as a king of the kingdom of heaven and to prophesy and fulfill this prophecy that they have been defeated. Is that they don't know it? It's that a lot of it hasn't come to pass yet, but it has. This was the strangeness of this Lord of the kingdom of heaven. Verse 8. Oh, yes, the fir trees. They rejoice at you. And the cedars of Lebanon say, since you, Satan, have been laid down, punished, defeated, no man has come up against us. Now, that is a powerful statement. The earth and the trees can speak. 
And they are saying, when you're defeated, Satan, no man on the earth is going to come up against us. Won't kill our little baby seals, our whales, pollute us, be in greed because you've been defeated. That's a powerful statement to study. When you look around the world, the earth is not happy. It has a voice. It cries out to God for help. The animals, the climate, the weather, the ground. You can see that in many places right now. There's famine, lack of rain, lack of food, or there's too much rain, flooding, volcanoes, earthquakes. The earth is crying out. But God says, I've already won. God's looking somewhere else, I think, way down the road. Even though he's decreeing, I've defeated you, Satan. Verse number nine. Hell and the grave from beneath is moved for you so they can meet you at your coming. They've opened up. Mm -hmm. It stirs up the dead for you. Who are the dead? The tormentors, the keepers, the jailers, the guards. The other demonic spirits, they're dead to God. They're out of his presence. They're not dead because spirits can never die. And all the chief ones of the earth. Hmm. Now that is interesting. Does that mean you? Or does that mean the strong men of Satan who had been the chief ones of the earth? Good question. That's how I would learn. God, what are you talking about? Give me a scripture to understand it it god is telling isaiah to prophesy out he's telling him future and what's happened hell has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations what does that mean hell has raised up from their thrones very good question We'll have to study that. Verse number 10. All they shall speak and say unto you, Satan, are you also become weak as we are? These are both his strong men, his demons and devils, looking at their king. It's also humans who are still in hell for not believing. They're looking when this Satan lost his keys to hell, death, and the grave, lost on the cross. And they say, have you become like us? Look at us down here. We're trapped. We're held captive. Can't go anywhere. We're tortured. We've lost all our power. And you too? Can you imagine the conversations in hell when they see Satan? fall into it himself verse 11 this is god now speaking to isaiah to speak and prophesy and remind satan of a few things verse 11 your pomp your glory your bragging about yourself your words your deeds your ideas your concepts your truth your rules, your desires are brought down to the grave. I speak that out to political leaders, presidents, politicians, business owners, husbands, religious leaders. I speak that myself to them. Your words and deeds have gone to the grave. They are dead, buried forgotten and the noise the words the music the bewitchments the disinformation you've been sending out your songs your delusions your vials your music your instruments your threats of all ignorance and darkness and death 
through your words and deeds, your bewitchments, your spells and curses, through your lies, through your disinformation. All of that, the worm, that thing that God created himself, that devours dead things, and we see that in the earth, in the natural, is spiritually spread under you to devour you. Mm -hmm. And the worms cover you. That is even for a human. That is our resting place. And what will happen to us? Unless we believe in something else. Do you think because you're a president, prime minister, a politician, a lawyer, a judge, a leader, a father or a mother, a religious leader, that if God judges your words and deeds as evil and wicked, as Satan's, he will not do the same to you upon your death, that your words will not fall down to the grave and be devoured? Something to think about. Verse number 12. God is still speaking to the king of Tyrus. Having Isaiah prophesy out. Is Isaiah talking to the king personally? Maybe, maybe not. Isaiah could just be speaking through prayer, petition. What God wants, because you will learn that in Isaiah, that God gave humanity, even on your planet, in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, the authority on earth, your planet, to speak. So he tells you what to say, to speak out into the realm of the spirit on your planet. So that's what Isaiah was probably doing. I don't think he went to him personally. It's hard to get to a king. Isaiah may be in another country having a vision, which your words prophetically go out, spoken, decreed. You're a king once you get in the family. God will work with you, speak to you, direct you, and guide you. What to say? He will help you feel comforted that he's one and to speak things, to bring it to pass, to remind them what's already happened. And that's what Isaiah was doing on behalf of God to Satan, who was working through the king of Tyrus. There was a real king of Tyrus, a human, and Satan was working through him. Because Satan wanted a kingdom. He wanted to be a king. But he had to work through the human spirit and through a human body to make that happen. So we had a two for one right there. And God was speaking to Satan through Isaiah. I've done that before. God will say, speak this. Sometimes you talk directly to Satan. And it's God's words to Satan that you're speaking. But it's coming from you, the political leader, the king, the ambassador, the spiritual warrior of the kingdom of heaven for your planet. Mine is earth. Verse number 12 continues. How are you, Lucifer, spiritually fallen from heaven? The high place, the kingdom of heaven. O oh, Lucifer, son, the offspring, the creation of the morning, the first age. You are not a son of God. You cannot inherit the kingdom legally. I can, and you can. Not a demon, a devil, or Satan himself. They are but servants. They are still used by God. Against their will, I guess. Mm -hmm. Lucifer was called the son of the morning, a light bearer. He was to bear the light of God. His words, his music, his truths, his knowledge. They would come in through his beautiful body that was made of jewels and shine out glorious rays and he was to bring back the praise he was to be a speaker on behalf of God 
But all of that, when it came into him, he thought it was so beautiful, he thought it was his. And it sort of was, it was passing through him, but he had gifts. And he started thinking, I should be the king with all this glory. How are you fallen, spiritually cut down, cast down to the ground, which did weaken the nations, the people, my kingdom on earth, my government inside of people? Mm -hmm. Verse 13. For you, O Lucifer, have said, thought, imagined, created, made a new image within you, in your deepness of your spiritual heart, your thoughts, your concepts, in the deepness of your heart and mind, where you were to serve me, your creator your king and lord and master. You had a throne in there that I sat in, and you dethroned me. You did a mutiny in yourself. You were a traitor to the kingdom that created you, to me and my glory, to my presence, to my light, to my truth. To me as your creator. You would not serve my children to come. You would not do as I asked. You stole from me. You robbed my glory, my praise. You took my gifts and you traffic and you sold them. And you gave them away to others. You would not serve my children to come. You would not even bow before my son, my word. In your heart, in your mind, you in the deepness of your spiritual heart and mind said to yourself, your five I wills. Number one, you said, I will ascend into the heaven. Means you're going to come up here where I'm at. Number two, I will exalt, lift up myself, my throne. My seat of rulership, my kingship, above the stars. That means above all the cherubims, all the angels, above the crown itself, above all the heavens, above all the great truths, the eternal lights of justice and truth, above all the high archangels of God. I will lift me up. Above all of that. Number three. I will sit upon the high mount. The mountain. The great high places. Of authority. Dominion and glory. Justice. And judgment. Where righteousness. And beauty sit. Where power emanates from. Where fire is created where creation exists, of the congregation of the nations, of the people of the kingdom of heaven. The government of the kingdom of heaven will be mine to rule, to make laws, to change. The offspring, the children of God, the system of agape love, the royal law, will no longer exist. Only my laws. Only love me, no matter what. The mountain and the sides of the north. This is the thoughts of this creature that was becoming and had become Satan, a perverted and twisted heart. This is what this video is showing the concepts, the thoughts, the developing, what was going on. This happens in all of us. We have that in our spirit, in our soul, our thoughts. Years ago, I learned to follow out the scripture references. 
slowly, carefully I would go. So let's go through Psalms 48, 1 through 14. Verse 1, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Lucifer desired to be in the hearts of all creatures where God considered it his city. The mountain of God, the high city of God, his own creator and Lord, and master and king and judge. That's what Lucifer desired. He desired to be the ruler in the high mountain of God's holiness, which was called the Holy of Holies. Satan was going to replace and had replaced God, his creator, in his own holy of holies. And I want to stop right here. We're beginning to see what started off so beautiful turned into a beast. And that helps us so when we study ourselves, humanity, the very sons of God, what, how our beauty turned into a beast. And I had to learn about myself and you by studying Lucifer becoming Satan, mm -hmm. the beast, the adversary of God. I had to see his, how his perversions occurred, how his thoughts and concepts became twisted, perverted. What caused him to want to overthrow his Lord and King? What happened to his mind that caused him to be an adversary of God? All of this was happening before the earth was created. This was in the high heavens, another age, the first age of creation. This was going on on the inside, the deep soul and thoughts. Now, Lucifer had no physical body. He was just a pure, beautiful spirit being. But he had a heart, a mind. He had a throne inside. He had the high mountain of God in him, the Holy of Holies. And it began, it was to be there. And God was to be inside of that, ruling and reigning, Lucifer's getting the praise from Lucifer. Lucifer's thoughts and deeds were to be worshiping and serving God within him. But that didn't satisfy Satan. Lucifer started wanting himself to be worshiped. His glory, his beauty started perverting him. His desires started lusting for what God was and had. And that's what I began learning about myself and our fall from where we were originally in the garden with our first ancestor on our planet, Adam. And how we began, we began pure, innocent, like Lucifer. And God had to help me to study in order to help you his way. I had to study Satan and his fall. So we'll pick up in the next lesson of the kingdom of darkness, spiritual Babylon. We're just beginning to understand that God will speak through people to remind Satan who he is and what happened. I think Satan probably forgets what really happened. After you've been out of a place, a family, a system, a kingdom, for so long, your memories fade. You can't quite remember what it used to be like. Your, everything is hidden in a mist. And all you're left with are your lust and desires that you have for yourself. Many of politicians are that way. They forget what maybe where they came from and who they were to serve. Mm -hmm. And they too become beasts within themselves. 
So I had to learn about us so I could learn how to help us the Lord's way. So I had to study Satan. I had to study Lucifer. I went slow and wrote these out. I looked up every word of his covering, diamonds, emeralds, sapphires. Can you imagine a body that was made up of jewels? It's like a crown, sort of. Uh huh. And then light shining through it. Beautiful, beautiful. I had to study his beauty. I had to study his thoughts, his heart. How can beauty corrupt you? I had to study a corrupt heart. Because I was going to be coming against Satan. I had to know what he had become. Because now I deal with him as Satan, the adversary of God. I had to understand the lust of his heart the fire that was burning inside of him. I had to see him at work through humanity, in the climate, on the earth, because I had to help you and the earth as well. I had to study, years and years of studying, a lot of isolation from the world. I couldn't go and do what other people did, just to be entertained or to pass the time or, watch sports. I studied. I watched movies. I read, read and reread, wrote and rewrote, still doing it, looking for ways to help myself to understand. My understanding had been darkened, just as yours has. Most people believe Satan's not real. He helped us to create some red thing with a red pitchfork. And we laugh at it at, when we celebrate Halloween. All Hallows Eve, and we all get dressed up. Mm -hmm. I had to study his kingdom, his ways. What is a lie? Disinformation. What is anger and hatred? What is lust? What is desires? What is the heart? What is the mind? How does that pervert you? What is perversion? What is darkness and ignorance? When I began years ago, I knew none of this. I had to go slow. We didn't have videos. So I had the book. I had movies. And I had true stories. Sometimes he'd make me watch a movie. And I had to write down every word. I did that. When The Matrix came out, I had to watch all three movies. And write down every word. I'd what he was giving me movies to watch. Lord of the Rings. Ancient histories about Rome. Mm -hmm. Julius Caesar. Fairy tales. Storybooks. Myths. Legends. Vikings. That's right. I study even now World War II. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm searching. Asking questions. I'm developing, thinking, concepts. I had to know. It's as if you were a soldier. And you're going to be a special operations ranger. Navy SEALs. Elite. You are trained differently. You can go behind enemy lines. And get a job done. I didn't know it at the time, but that's what I'd become. I knew nothing of the spirit realm. Nothing. I had knew nothing about kingdom of heaven. I had to study Dr. Miles Monroe of the Bahamas Faith Ministries. He spoke and talked and taught on the kingdom of heaven and us as kings. Never heard that in church. All I heard was we were an old sinner. Saved by grace. Just glad that I'm saved. On my way. Thank you, Lord. Just have more faith. Just believe more. And if your aunt prayers don't get answered, keep believing. That was all I heard. So I had to study. God had to sit me at home. And study. Spend time in his word. Read and write. Read and write. Look at nature. Oh, my God. Goodness, you can learn a lot from nature. It will help you. It's here to help you. 
Just love it. Don't curse it. Love, I learned, was the way. So you be encouraged. There's help for you if you will become a disciple and a seeker. But first, we got to help you get born again to come out of this kingdom of darkness so you can learn, like Pastor Deborah, the love of God, the agape love is drawing you to himself out of the hands of Satan, the beast of the kingdom of darkness. He's drawing you to another kingdom, heaven, the kingdom of agape love, joy, and peace. He's drawing you. Your heart is already desiring it. In thoughts and little tears, maybe. You're trying to escape mm -hmm, self-hypnosis. You disassociate out of your body when abuse comes. You learn that there is another you when you have a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody is moving out of their bodies, their physical bodies. Some have learned how to do it through witchcraft. Go watch the movie by um, Shirley MacLaine mm -hmm. called Out on a Limb. She, had, she learned how to go out of her body. Go study psychic rumors from the CIA that during the Vietnam War, they found people with psychic abilities who could see into other places. They didn't realize they were leaving their body. Go study the Manchurian candidate and see how torture and abuse can cause devastating results in a mind. I studied movies, read true stories, read horrible stories of high priest and Satanism and what they would do to train a child. Horrible. Read true stories about children who had forgotten and then remembered. I studied. God helped me every way he could so I could help you his way. I had to learn there was a you, a forever person in a body of dirt. Now I know that there's others on other planets, star systems and galaxies. And I'm to help you too, to get truth and knowledge understanding, mm -hmm. help you come out of the disinformation, out of the lies, bewitchment, the spells, the curses, out of the kingdom of darkness and into the light of truth, the kingdom of heaven. So if you would like that, just nod your head, say yes, raise your finger. It's done and you're born again. It's all taken care of. Free gift doesn't cost you anything, but it will cost you everything. May cost you your family, your life, your business. May cost you a lot on social media. Mm -hmm. But your heart will be at peace. You will know you have got the right family, that you made the right choice, even if death comes. Mm -hmm. And God can even use your death as a seed. A grain of corn falls down to the earth to produce another plant. Your death can be used mm -hmm, for others to believe in him. That's what happened with the early martyrs when they were crucified, burned alive, torn by lions in the stadiums for the Romans and others to just be entertained. They would sing hymns, pray. Mm -hmm. And it changed many people. So the manner of death that you go through can actually reach out to other people. And if you're at death's door, come on over. You're free to leave your death body. If your body is dying, giving way, you can leave it. God will accept you and receive you right into the kingdom. There's an angel waiting for you. Take their hand. He'll take you now if you're ready. So you don't have to go through all the fear and loneliness because you're not alone anymore. So you come. The gift of love is here. The gift of life is here waiting for you. Father, be about your work. Fulfill Isaiah 61 and 62 in their lives. Bring them forth out of the kingdom of darkness, 
out from the lust and the hate, the anger of Satan, out of his kingdom of darkness. Bring him into your kingdom of heaven, of life, into your relationship as your child. Father, become unto them all that you desire. Give them a Hebrews 4.12, a spiritual circumcision out of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Father, be about your work through this video. Teach them that they can come free, that you have already defeated Satan through life. Because out of death, your own came life. Father, do your work that only you can do and bring the children home. A new creature, creatures of the light. Wherever they're at, whatever planet, star system, and galaxy they're in, do your work. Here, even in the garden, or when they return back to their bodies. Father, you let Satan know he's been defeated. Fulfill your prophetic words you spoke through Isaiah. It's a done deal. He is put down to the dirt, and they have risen up. Newness of life, a new forever person, always to be in the family of God and in the light. And no longer your adversary, and no longer a captive of disinformation, lies, deception, anger, or hate, but a child of love, agape, yours, in the name of Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God, that went to a cross, that died for you, and all creatures, and even the earth, to make a way for all things new through death. And to show us the truth of resurrection, that out of death could come life. We thank you for him. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, I'll see you in the next Kingdom of Darkness episode. Bye.